Good afternoon, everyone. It's 4 o'clock. Coming up this hour, Hamilton City Councilors meet to discuss the latest site for a sports stadium. And the Liberal government is set to review hydro rates for the province's customers. The Liberal government is planning to review hydro rates charged to customers during off-peak hours. It's part of the province's smart meter program that's been taking a little heat. Maria Hayes joins us now live with more. Maria. Donna, it certainly hasn't happened the way consumers were hoping. Even the Premier admits he's hearing from people who try doing their dishes or their laundry at late night hours, but still see increases, not decreases, in their hydro bills. Dalton McGinty says his government will review electricity rates in off-peak hours to make sure they're low enough to encourage people to change their behavior. That is the basis of the $1.5 billion smart meter program. But the NDP has called the concept a failure and says it should be scrapped. We would have rather seen $1.5 billion invested in things like the retrofitting of, of homes and buildings. Uh, that would have created jobs uh, and it would have actually met some conservation goals. Uh, we think that uh, peak saver programs are a good way to go. Uh, we think that uh, energy saving appliances are, are a good way to go to help people proactively conserve energy. There's a lot of places that, that $1.5 billion could have been invested. Meanwhile, the Conservatives are pointing the finger at the HST for causing the rate increases, along with green energy policies. Donna? Well, today is the deadline set by Hostco to come to a decision from Hamilton on where a new stadium for the Pan Am Games will be built. But the debate is far from over. City councillors are meeting as we speak to discuss yet another possible location. Now, the newest site is a 51-acre CP rail yard near Longwood in Aberdeen. According to a city staff report, the land meets the needs of both the city and the Tiger Cats. The report also suggests bumping the stadium up to 25,000 seats, but that would require applying to the government for more funds and extending the deadline until October 12th. A Hamilton man has been arrested after allegedly trying to lure a child online. Police say a 14-year-old girl was contacted online and offered a large amount of money to perform sexual acts. 29-year-old Majinder Brar is facing several charges. And a first-year student has died outside a residence at Queen's University in Kingston. Media in Westport, Connecticut, where the teen is from, have identified him as 18-year-old Cameron Bruce. Police haven't confirmed the identity yet. Students heading out for sports practice found the body yesterday on the first day of class. Police say it is a tragic incident. An autopsy will be done in Ottawa today. Divers are searching a pond west of Edmonton for evidence in the disappearance of a missing Alberta couple. They entered the water this morning on a remote property located in Heavy Bush. Lyle and Marie McCann, both in their 70s, were last seen on July 3rd on their way to visit relatives in British Columbia. Two days later, their motorhome was found burning near Edson. 38-year-old Travis Edward Vader was arrested by RCMP in July and is considered to be a suspect in the case. He hasn't been charged in McCann's disappearance. A shot fired inside a Toronto mall sent shoppers running for cover last night. Police believe the gunman was aiming at a security guard inside Fairview Mall just before closing last night. The bullet didn't hit anyone. A security guard was able to wrestle the gun from the suspect who fled on foot. Police say they know who they're looking for and have surveillance video as evidence. Let's go outside now to Brian Wood, who's standing by on a fairly nice day today. Yeah. A little cloudy. Yeah, a little, little cloud, a little sunshine. Not a bad day to be outside today if you're just getting out and uh, going out to enjoy the sun. Uh, be in, keep in mind it's a little cooler than it was yesterday. Yesterday we got to 24 degrees by about this time of the afternoon, but today we're sitting around 18 to 19 degrees. We've had some showers around, but there's not much to see right now. Here's our radar picture. Some showers pushed through the Peterborough area and into the Lake Ontario earlier today, but not much to be seen around this area, although we do have, as Donna mentioned, some cloud cover today. Temperatures a little bit lower than we had yesterday and around the, the normal range for this time of year. As far as temperatures are concerned, no, we've been a little bit lower than that today. It'll be the same thing for tomorrow as well before it gets cool and we get rain in the forecast for Thursday, but after that, and I'll tell you all about what to expect as we get closer to the weekend and what's happening on the roads in a few minutes, Donna. 
And we have just received word that Council, Hamilton City Council, has voted 13 to 2 in favor of the new land for the proposed stadium. And that, of course, is the CP Rail lot at Aberdeen and uh, Dundurn in Hamilton. And we'll have more on that, of course, on Longwood, rather. And we'll have more on that, of course, uh, coming up at 6 o'clock and throughout the afternoon as information is made available. Well, after more than a year spent in an Iranian prison, American hiker Sarah Shord is finally on her way home, but there are still a lot of questions surrounding her release. Andrea Mitchell has more from Tehran. The good news on a confusing day in Tehran is that Sarah Short has been released. The American hiker is on her way to a reunion with family, we are told. We don't know when she will arrive somewhere in the Persian Gulf region, but she will be, we think, reunited with family. That at least according to her lawyer. We also don't know whether any money was paid for her release. The Iranians over the weekend, the prosecutor had demanded $500,000 bail, and we don't know whether some or all of that was paid. It would not have been paid, we are told, by the U.S. government, but it could have been paid by other friendly governments on Sarah Short's behalf. The Swiss were negotiating this release on behalf of the U.S. government and also an Iranian attorney who was representing her. But importantly, two young men, 28-year-old Josh Patel and Shane Bauer, are still in prison. They have not been released. Back to you. The new Niagara Police Detachment in Grimsby was officially dedicated this afternoon with a ribbon-cutting ceremony. The Niagara Regional Police Chief, Andy Selvel, and other high-ranking officers were on hand for the dedication. Detachment Commander Staff Sergeant Randy Bleach unveiled a plaque and then led visitors on a tour. The public is welcome to tour the building, which is on the South Service Road between 4 and 8 p.m. tonight. The last new police detachment built in Niagara was in Welland in 1994. A new tech lab has been unveiled at a Stony Creek High School. Future Shop picked up the tab for the upgrade at Salt Peet District High School. The tech lab will provide students with the chance to prepare themselves for future jobs in technical related fields. The grant is part of Future Shop's 10 year commitment to support education. Still ahead, the first person to undergo a face transplant speaks out about organ donation. This weather report is brought to you by Buckley Insurance. Best insurance advice, best insurance price. From local fields to our chef's table, savor the culinary event of the season. Plus, don't miss the Localicious Launch Party, September 14th at the Art Gallery of Hamilton. Enjoy the downtown Hamilton Localicious experience, September 17th through October 3rd. Which designer are your nails wearing? If you don't love them, then you need to try Designer Nails with BioSculpture Gel. Enjoy over 200 treatment and color gels that won't damage your nails. At your next salon or spa visit, insist on BioSculpture Nails and put the beauty of your nails first. Back to school? Hakeem Optical has just what your eyes desire. Get two new looks for yourself or share with a friend from only $1.99. But that's not all. Enter our Cash for Class contest and you could win one of 10 prizes of $1,000 this year. Make an impression or two with a new look from Hakeem Optical. When the worst strikes, who is protecting your building? Contact the experts at New Tech Fire Protection. 1-800-969-5149. New Tech, leaders in life safety. Mother Nature's no match for Tampax Pearl Compact. With a 40% smaller applicator, it's full-size protection. Only cuter. Connie Culp made history when she became the first person to receive a face transplant in the United States. Well, now the 47-year-old woman is helping an organization in Ohio find more organ donors. Mark Zinni has her story. Connie Culp doesn't love the spotlight, but she was back in it Monday night. The 47-year-old survivor is helping LifeBank celebrate their grand opening in Warrensville Heights. A new office, but the same mission, coordinating organ and tissue donations to keep people, like Connie, alive. I'm doing good this week. <laughs> 
Connie can laugh, and she continues to make amazing progress. The mother and grandmother was shot by her husband in 2004, leaving her with unimaginable face and bone injuries. In 2008, Connie underwent the nation's first near-total face transplant at the Cleveland Clinic, thanks to a donor she knows little.